Sacramento. It is 1 p.m. here in Sacramento, California, where I am broadcasting live from Studio 4. It is 2 p.m. on the Mountain Standard Time, 3 p.m. on the Central Standard Time, 4 p.m. on the Eastern Standard Time, and it's now time for the Heart of the Matter with Dr. Madri. I want to say good afternoon to you, Doc, but before you answer me, let me welcome those who are on YouTube and Facebook. I want to welcome you to the heart of the matter with Dr. Madri. Yes, she is here and she is looking beautiful in blue and black. Yes, I'm seeing her. <laughs> I want to say good afternoon to you on HGG Radio. If you want to see the blue and the black that she's wearing, jump on over to YouTube and Facebook. That's HGG Radio YouTube and Facebook page. Of course, you can always jump over to my YouTube, Dailies with Denise Devotional, or my Facebook page, Denise Johnston. Want to make this disclaimer before we get into it? This content is for informational purposes only. The information is not to be used for diagnostic or treatment purposes and never is to be a replacement for actual in-person counseling. Let me say this again. This content is for informational purposes only. This information is not to be used for diagnostic or treatment purposes and never is to be a replacement for actual in-person counseling. Let me also remind you that this program is a calling program. It is designed for you to get freed. The number to call is a WhatsApp number. 825-343-4486. That's a WhatsApp number, 825-343-4486. You can always call and talk to the doctor about whatever situation you're facing. Doesn't necessarily have to be on the topic that we're talking about, but whatever it is that you are going through emotionally, physically, mentally, Psychologically, spiritually, you can talk to the doctor about it. Good afternoon to you, Dr. Madri. Good afternoon, Denise. I'm here. Yes, you are. <laughs> and looking radiant and ready to go. Radiant. That's what I like. That's what I was after today. <laughs> I hope I look radiant today. I'm you so do. glad. <laughs> Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Spring oh. has sprung. Oh, my God. And it's beautiful out there. Yeah, indeed. And I have a whole bunch of stuff that I was writing down that we could talk about, and I just don't know where to start. <gasps> all right. <laughs> you know, no. I, it was all... What, 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 what? I like the whole bunch of stuff. Whole bunch of stuff. I like uh, that part. Yeah, I was thinking it'd be great if the listeners uh, would tell us what they want us to talk about. So call in and tell us what you want to talk about. So there's <laughs> that. Or they could uh, text us questions. They don't necessarily have to talk to us in person, although it's great if they would call and talk to us in person. We can talk about shame. I heard you talking about that in your dailies. Shame is one of the biggest, gigantic, most huge things that comes into my consulting room every time is, is clients living with shame. And by the way, shame is the foundation of addiction. When when we deal with addictions, we can usually boil it all down to shame issues. And you're trying to escape shame by medicating yourself or escaping. So there's shame. Uh, I heard you talking about changing your heart. How do you do that? How do you change your heart? Have, have any of you ever had a change of heart? Uh, I heard you talking about repentance. We could talk about repentance and how to do that. Uh, I loved that question. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And while my first response to that question was, no, I wasn't there. I mean, it was certainly before my time. But in all actuality, I was there. 
because the the same sins that were on him on that cross pertain to me right now. Those are my sins. So in essence, I certainly was there when they crucified my Lord. Um, let's see, what else is on my list? Um, how to return to the basics. Ooh, that's, that's good right there, Denise. What are the basics? Do you want to talk? Let's let's start talking about that until somebody calls and asks us a question or a comment. Let's let's start there, Denise. What do you consider the basics? Before I answer you, so listeners, Dr. Madri is waiting on you. She's depending on you to determine the topic today. We, we the choice is shame, repentance. The other one is change your heart, change of heart, change of heart. Were you there? Uh, were you there? Okay. Shame, repentance. Were you there? Change of heart. You, dis well, you decide. The, the, also, another one was what is surrender? What is surrender? You decide what that is, what the topic will be today. So you're asking me, what, what's the question for me again? What do you think the basics are? When you say return to the basics, what are the basics? The basics is understanding the word, the power of God, what Christ did for us. The basic is an understanding of what happened in the garden, why Christ needed to come. The basics is understanding that we are but sinners saved by grace and in need of his grace. The basics is an understanding of who God is and who we are as a result. Very good. That's the basics for me. Years ago, um, it, it kept coming up. I, I was, uh, my main, uh, my main uh, service to the church was teaching Bible studies. And this was years ago. Uh, it became very apparent that the church we were going to needed a bonehead Bible class. You know, bonehead, you, that's a, a term we use here in the United States. Do you use that in Jamaica? It, bonehead English means you you didn't you don't know the basics about English or bonehead math you know go go I got a bonehead you know I'm not very good at math and so it's it's the basics I don't know if you have that it's not phrase. as nice as as oh you're not understanding maths or you're dumb you're bonehead <laughs> right <laughs> right and so it was uh, apparent that we needed a bonehead Bible study and so I called it that and. Uh, in fact, when we were advertising for it, this was so, so much fun. I had a friend of mine put a brown paper bag over his head with two little holes. And he came up with me to make the announcement that he, he's really ashamed of himself, that he's been a Christian for 25 years and he doesn't know the Bible at all. And so he's going to the bonehead Bible class, but he didn't, didn't want to reveal his true identity because he was so shameful, felt so shameful about it. Well, this bonehead Bible study, was so fantastic. We started in Genesis and I gave them I gave them the the beautiful nuggets from each book of the Bible. We started off with the basics of who is Jesus, who is God, who is the Holy Spirit, what is the church. We started with those basics. But then they said, "Let's go to the Bible." So then we started in Genesis and we just went all the way through picking out the nuggets from each book of the Bible. And do you know that bonehead Bible study lasted eight years? <laughs> it was so great. And I have to tell you, after one year, those boneheads knew more than the basic congregation in that church because they were spending time in the word. They were spending time talking it out, researching for themselves, and they loved it. I loved teaching it. That is such a good thing to do, is go back and say, well, who is Jesus? Who is God? What is the word of God? What is prayer? 
you know, those basics, you start there and then you find with just a, a bit of investment that you, you rise up really fast. So I don't know if that's something that we need again. Um, but I, I have all those notes from that eight year course. I didn't plan on having it be an eight year course, but that, it was so much fun being together. And uh, the, the people who came to that basic course were so hungry. They were so hungry for more. I was hungry for more. So we traveled the road together. I'm always hungry. So whenever you want to bring it here, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think you know it all, or you, you know, I've been like I, I told you yesterday, Denise, I've been a Christian now for 53 years. I was 19 years old when I when I gave my my life to the Lord, or I realized that he had already accepted me just as I am. So 53 years, you know, the, you collect a lot of information. And hopefully you grow during that time, but um, some people who have been Christians for even longer than that still don't know the basics. Uh, there was another challenge that came to me in, uh, I think it was 2015, somebody said uh, in a group, well, you just have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. And that, that phrase just went off in my heart. You just have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. I had heard that phrase so many times. You just have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. And I thought, who am I? And what does that mean? What does that phrase really mean? It's it's used so flippantly and so quickly. Oh, you just have to know who you are in Christ Jesus. But what does that mean? And so I challenged myself to sit down and find out what does that mean? And I came up with just in, a, oh, maybe an hour of flipping through the word, I scooped up 119 phrases. Uh, and, and there's many, many, many more than 119, but I call it my 119 because I have uh, made copies of this for so many people, and I've done Bible studies on this. And the 119 things you talk about basics. The first thing on my list is I am blessed. That's from Deuteronomy. I'm overtaken with blessings. That's also in Deuteronomy. I am the head and not the tail. Doc, I am a. Me. A call is yeah. coming. Hold that for me. Oh, hooray! Hello, good afternoon. You're on the heart of the matter with Dr. Madre. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the heart of the matter with Dr. Madri on AGG Radio. Okay. I was just acting for some prayer. Go Let's ahead and speak time. to her and tell her what you need, what's going on and what you need to be prayed for. I just want to be um, prayed for, for anything that is affecting my life. and financial weakness and i'm about to go and do a um an interview and i was just asking if you could pray for me that i would get to is this an interview for a job no it's a visa interview a visa interview yeah and what would you like to see happen with this visa interview? I just would like, because my daughter is overseas and she's going to be graduating from um, college. So she would like me to come and come to the graduation. But I just want to a prayer that come true that I could go Can I, my daughter. Can I be so bold as to ask you, do you, do you have a relationship with God? Are you a Christian? No, I'm not a Christian. Okay. So it's more important to seek the Lord than his gifting. And that is something that we often do. Can I yeah, ask I you what, what is, Lord, what is holding church. you back? What is holding you back from your surrender? Nothing really. No, I was planning this soon to get baptized. Okay. Are you willing to surrender it all right now? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Madre, 
Can you lead her in that prayer? And of then course. you can pray for her, please. Yes. Caller, um, can you can you with a, a free heart say say that Jesus is Lord? Yeah, Lord, I'm not hearing you. Yeah. And do you believe yeah. that? Do you believe that God Talk raised him? You're low and she's not hearing you. So can you speak a little louder, please? Oh. Yes, of course. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you now. Okay. Uh, I, I just want to ask you if you can freely and and sincerely say that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, I can say that. Jesus is yeah. Lord. Yeah. And, and do you believe that God raised him from the dead? Yeah, I believe everything about Jesus. Okay, that's I beautiful. Was going, I, I, I was growing up in a Christian home. So, the, the believing in God, I always believe there's a God. Love Always know that without God, we are nothing. Yeah. So. Good. Well, the word of that. God says, the word of God says, if you believe that Jesus is Lord and believe that in your heart and you believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So glory to God, you mm -hmm. are saved. So, so, um, uh, let, let's just, could, could you repeat after me this, this brief prayer before we address the issue of the visa? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you see my life. That you see my life. That you died for me. That you died for me. And that you were resurrected to new life. And that you were resurrected to new life. And because of that. And because of that. I also live. I also live. Thank you that you hear my prayers. Thank you that you hear my prayers. And that I am born again. And that I am born again. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um I I would I would guess that you called because you do believe in the power of prayer. Is that correct? Yeah, I surely believe in prayer. Okay. All right. So so right now we're going to agree together about this visa. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, I'm just going to pray over you. Father God, you see all the paperwork and you see all of the different tasks that need to happen in order to make this visa process smooth. I, You see your daughter. You've heard her prayer, Father. I just pray right now that this visa pr process would be smooth, that she would be able to celebrate with her daughter this glorious event. How proud this mama must be that her daughter is graduating from college. She needs to be there to see this, Lord. I know that it would be a joyful thing for her and for you to see this process come through easily and productively and sweetly, Lord. Any, any worry about this, Father, I pray that she would put this in your hands. Any fear that it might not come through, that she would put this in, in your hands, that she would not not look at that, but look at the goal, which is getting to see her daughter graduate. Father, we put this in your hands. We put the concern of this in your hands, knowing that you are a good, good God and that you hear our prayers. We release this to you. We thank you for the outcome. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. How proud you must be of your daughter graduating from college. Yeah, I'm so proud. Is she the first person to graduate from college in your family, or have you had others graduate? No, I have two daughters. One graduated from the university as a nurse. She graduated about four years ago. That's and terrific. this one, she she went on to culinary foods in acting college in uh, Ohio. Ah. Ohio. So she'll be graduating in May. 
<laughs> oh, that's wonderful. All right. Well, um, let us know how the process is going and we expect good things and we've released this to the Lord and let's see what happens next. Thank you, caller. Okay. Then. Caller, I'm yeah. going to, I'm going to, yes, I'm going to recommend to you that you find yourself in a Bible believing church and Take the next step of water baptism and receiving the gift of the Holy Spirit that the Lord has to yes, offer us because I mean, this the, hit early, very soon. And I want to remind I mean, you that the word of God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all and of these, all that you're seeking. And I can tell you, yeah. I can tell you, <laughs> I can tell you. All these will be added unto you. Yeah, I know. Right. So if you know, thank you. Uh, do my name the right is Claudette. Thing. Claudette, thank you so much yeah. for calling. This is your first time with us. Thank you yeah, so much. I will continue, Carl. All righty. You thank can you. continue to listen okay. to the broadcast on hggradio.ca. Thank you so much. Okay. All righty. Okay. Have a wonderful thank day. You. God bless you. Okay. Same to you. Yeah, same to you. Let me release her. All right, there we go. Doc, yeah, can yeah. you believe that where I wanted to start it, I was think I was in my bed laying down today and I said, you know where I would love to start this broadcast? And then I said, but I remember Doc and I were talking about a topic last week and I, I don't remember what it was, but <laughs> we were talking about that. So maybe she'll want to go there. I'm not going to, I'm not going to interfere. But really, 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 where I wanted to start, since the listeners are not selecting for us, let me start. Where I wanted to start is how is your 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 53 year anniversary with God. That's where yeah, I wanted yeah. to start the broadcast this morning because I'm not even yet 53. <laughs> <laughs> I accepted the Lord before you were born. Right? And, and not only did you accept him, you stayed on the journey. <laughs> <laughs> By his grace, you have remained on his journey. And that for me is big. That, that is commendable. You know? So I, I want to congratulate you on your anniversary, on your birthday with Jesus. You celebrated yesterday. And what a legacy. What an influence you are to those of us who are, you, you know, I've been, I've been a Christian for a long time, but I really consider my walk with God eight years ago. I consider it to be eight years old because the level that he has taken me to, it, my friends who knew me before, especially at my old church, there's one particular friend who is a prior partner. She, she doesn't like to hear when I say it because she's like, but you knew God a long time ago. I said, I knew some aspects of him. And I'm not claiming to know everything. But what God did for me in the last eight years, but I cannot compare that to 58, 53 years of walking with God. Tell us about your, your coming to Christ. That's what I want to talk about today, to be honest with you. Okay, I can do that. Let's see if I can remember back that far. Okay. <laughs> now you have you did you see the movie Jesus Revolution? I did while I was in Canada. That's me. I now I wasn't a hippie. I was I was very straight. Mm -hmm. But that was that was me. It was 1971 when I came to the Lord. And I was in college. And um I let's see how do I how do I begin I I knew there was something missing in my life I I, I was very popular I was a cheerleader <laughs> um I you know had long black hair that was very very straight I lived in a beach town why I did I always think you were a blonde no, well, it's because of this. I, I have black hair, long, straight black hair. This is this is 1971. Remember, they're hippies, and so we had very straight hair, and we wore sandals. But I was not a hippie, but we had the look. 
And I was in a beach town, very much like the Jesus Revolution movie. I, I loved that movie. It touched my heart. And I remembered what was happening spiritually was profound. Um, people finding the Lord all over the place. And I had a meeting with my uh, student affairs um, director who was the, uh, I was the head cheerleader, of course, don't you know? I had a meeting with her and at the at the time I had two boyfriends <laughs> and I was trying to keep them apart <laughs> so that so that they didn't know about each other and wouldn't you know they both broke up with me on the same day <laughs> so I, that did they find out did they find no, out no they, they just when they just broke up with you. God did they, just, they just both broke up with me on the same day. I was devastated because uh, in my 19 year old mind that having a boyfriend was everything. I mean, that's what made you cool and popular and that was your social life and everything. And so I had two of them and it was not because I wanted to, it was because of, I, I didn't know how to, break it off with either of them. And so they both broke it off. So I had a meeting with the student director and I went into her office and I was devastated and I was crying. And she says, you want to talk about it? And I said, no. And she goes, okay, so what we have ahead of us is, and she got down to business, even though I was crying. And I said, wait a minute, I do want to talk about this. So I began to talk about it. And she says, well, what's, what is the basic problem here. And I said, I don't know who I am and I don't know what I want to be. And she said, well, who do you, who have you ever met that you admire and want to be like? And I said, well, I want to be like you. Cause she was, let's see, I was 19. So she was 23 and she was very cool. And she had this cool job and I wanted to be like her. She was very self-confident. And I said, what makes you so different from everybody else? I want to be you. She stopped what she was doing and she opened the bottom drawer of her desk and she got out her Bible. And she began to read to me from the Bible. And she told me at that point, you know, I'm 19 years old. She told me everything that I ever wanted to hear, that Jesus loved me. He loved me unconditionally, that if I was the only one, he would die just for me just for me, if he had to do it over again, he would have done the same thing. He loved me so much that he died for me. And if I put my trust, if I would put my trust in him, he would come and live within me. It was March 25th, 1971 at 3.25 in the afternoon when I walked out of her office after I'd prayed a prayer similar to what I prayed with the, the caller. And I was a different person. I was different than who I was when I walked in. I walked in broken. I walked in confused. I walked in naive. I walked in stupid, with, in spiritual terms, stupid. I walked out full. I said, what do I do with this now? And she said, start thanking God for everything that you see. And so I began to do that as I walked to my car. And as I got in my car and I drove to my home, I thanked him for what I saw. And that was the beginning of my journey. She also told me to start reading the Gospel of John. And when you said, Denise, uh, or asked, uh, were you there? And you that you would have been Peter. I think I would have been John. I think because of the love that I feel from Jesus, for the love that I have for him, that's been the theme in my life, is I am the one Jesus loved. I love. He loves me with an everlasting love. I know that. I know that. So I went in one way and I came out another way, wiser. Uh, what that one pivotal point in my life did for me, it kept me from dying. 
It kept me out of situations that would have been death for me. It kept me from promiscuity. It kept me from drugs. It kept me from alcohol. It kept me from making really terrible decisions. I've made some bad decisions in my life, even though I was a Christian, but uh, it saved my life eternally, but it also saved me in a physical way and in a mental way. And it, it, it set me up for this life that I have now. That's my story. Wow. 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 I could listen to you forever telling the story. I don't think you tell the story enough. I, I don't I don't even know if my kids know that story. I don't know. I don't know if the kids have heard that story. Wow. If my daughter's listening, she's she's hearing it now. I know my son's at work, he wouldn't be listening. Uh, but it's it's very very personal, and I don't I don't not share it, um, because you know what he's doing in my life right now. That's really exciting too. So I don't usually go back and tell that beginning story most because most most people don't ask. Okay. Um, yeah. What I do tell them is is what he's doing today for me, and well, what you know what he just did in the eye doctor's office. You know, at nine thirty this morning what he did for me there, you know, a healing that's ha that happened. That's what I, I usually focus on is what's happening right now. You but see, thank you for, thank you for asking. I've heard pastor Damien said this thing that has impacted me. And is that our children are making the same mistakes that we did or even worse because they see the end result but they don't know the beginning or the process to get us to the end. There are persons who are at the beginning wanting to cross over into this thing that we found. Many persons have not yet said yes to Jesus, and it is not the miracles that God has done in our life that is going to make the difference. Because there's a 19-year-old who needs to know that I can come into a relationship with God and not just come into that relationship, but remain in him for 53 years. Do you know what you're doing to me right now? I don't even know about the listeners, right? Listeners, if you want to call, the number is WhatsApp 825-343-4486. Otherwise, I'm going to make this about me. <laughs> the number is 825-343-4486. Please call, jump in the conversation. I want to know about your story, your beginning with God. That's what I want to know about today. How did you come to that place of revelation, that place of realization that you needed a savior? Tell us about your beginning. But Doc... There, for me, to know that I can be on this journey for, for another 53 years, because if you did it for 53, it means that I can be on it for another 53 years. This is giving me so much hope right now that this is not something that is going to phase or fade away in 10 years or in 15 years, but this is something that can last a lifetime with God. You know, hmm. what made you not want to give up at 21 when you saw the popular kids doing other stuff that looks attractive? Okay, that, that's a revolution fade off. What made you hold on to this thing that you found? Terrific, terrific question. Um, because I, I, I am trying to imagine somewhere along the line stopping this and i can't i can't comprehend ever going back or denying it and what has kept me for 53 years is community because the jesus revolution was huge and i instantly was drawn into it uh, my best friend when i when i came to the lord my best friend within two weeks jumped into it also because I was so excited about it. So the two of us started looking for youth groups or college groups to, 
to join in with, we happened to hit, for goodness sakes, it was a Presbyterian church that had this charismatic, evangelical, tongue-talking college group. We jumped right into that. And the community there was so welcoming and on fire for Jesus. I think, let's see. Um, okay, so March of, of 1971, I think it was January where some of the girls there said, we're going out to the university because they're, they're showing people how to speak in tongues. And I thought, well, that sounds weird. I'm in for that. <laughs> so I went, I don't even know where we were but it, the Holy Spirit was just rolling through that group. And during the service, they stopped and said, if any of you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, go with Susan off here. And so we just, as a group, went with Susan over here. And I remember them uh, praying over us and saying, you know, how, how to do this. And I thought, this is kind of wackadoodle. You know, I don't, what, what is this? And all of a sudden I started speaking. In <laughs> and I said, well, that's cool. I love, what is, what's going on? And then they started teaching us about what this was. And, and they said, keep practicing. So, you know, that was not only a fantastic year in 1971, but then, then when I received the gift of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, then I was propelled into this, this next realm of, of uh, curiosity, shall we say, about the Holy Spirit and learning about that, but it was community, Denise. So then um, when, I, when I left that college and then went to Fresno State, um, that's where, um, <laughs> this was interesting, um, the dorms at that point uh, were broken into dry wings and wet wings. In other words, where alcohol was allowed and where alcohol was not allowed, and so, I checked on the box, no alcohol. Well, it turned out all the Christ Christian girls that were coming into Fresno State at that point checked no alcohol. So on our floor, there were 62 girls and 60 of us were born again Christians. <laughs> Talk about community. It was like I was going to a Christian college. Wow. <laughs> and wow. so those have become lifelong friends. And that's where I met my dear friend, Charlotte. And, and uh, she became a Christian, I think, Let's see, maybe uh, if she's listening to the show, she should call in. I think it was maybe uh, the 73 when she she was not a Christian at the, at the moment and she became a Christian because of all of us. I mean, how could she get away, right? <laughs> so she became a Christian and then we just, there was just a big group of us. And when you're in community like that, uh, you're held so accountable. And then we started going to amazing churches. Fresno has uh, amazing spiritual churches there. And um, so there was more community there. And that's it. So you're saying that we, we can't do this Christian walk alone? We can't lock up in our bedroom and just read the Bible and learn all that we need to do and just don't have anything to do with people? Doubtful. Even, even um, nuns and monks have community. You know, they, they close themselves away from the world and they may not be associating with people outside of the convent or the monastery, but they still have community within it. Christ had to add 12. Right. <laughs> I, I think it's doubtful that you can be a lone ranger, if I can use that term, and, um, and survive. I mean, the pressure is so profound from the world. Can I invite Sadi Cass? You've You've posted, good afternoon, ladies, loving the discussion, just chiming in. We really want you to chime in. So could you call the WhatsApp number 825-343-4486 and really chime in? We want to hear about your coming to Jesus. What brought you to that place of salvation and surrender? It is Holy Week, and this is what 
we would really like to look at today. Dr. Madri is celebrating 53 years of walking with God, and I'm impressed, to say the least, by someone who could walk that walk for 53 years. Because at 19, that's too busy partying. Come on. <laughs> That's all hey. fresh. Buju Banton was fresh. <laughs> I was in the dad. I was in the space. I grew up with let, But let me let me just say that uh because I was 19 and a Christian didn't mean that we didn't party. We partied as Christian girls and uh-huh. brought some Christian guys in and we we had a great time. We had so much fun. I'm not saying that I all of a sudden became a nun <laughs> and was sequestered. We we partied as Christian Christian girls. Let me try and, and get this caller back on. Hello there. Hi, good afternoon. You're on the Heart of the Matter with Dr. Madri. And the answer is November 1st, 1973. <laughs> She's there <listening>. it is. <laughs> <laughs> So you are listening. You know my story. I mean, this is probably the person who knows my story best. Hi there. I know who you are, obviously. Hi, yes. But when Denise is saying there was just too many temptations, I mean, we had fun, didn't we? Oh, yes. Kristen's have fun. We we have, (laughs) yes, we did have a great time. I think the church that we um, mostly went to, the pastor had had uh, come up through a youth for Christ. Excuse me, youth for Christ. Excuse me, youth Bless for you. Christ. And so that um, it really drew um, the college and young people, and there was just really a, a spirit of um, just that you can have fun as a Christian and enjoy the Lord and laugh and be silly and, you know, as well as Bible studies and, you know, and the usual. So that, that was great. And it was, uh, for me, it was uh, an incubator as a young believer. Um, Yeah, that was really good. And the, uh, how I, when I became a Christian, it was kind of a weird thing. We we had a um, <laughs> everybody in the seventies had a folk singing group, you know. So we did too, and ours was a Christian folk singing group. And before I was a believer, I was part of that group when I sang all the songs, and I did not feel like a hypocrite at all because I felt that what we were singing was true for other people. Um, For me, I just kind of compartmentalized it that, I mean, not that I was rejecting it, but I, I just compartmentalized until um, that night, November 1st, um, I was uh, in, uh, in love confronted, we'll say, um, by one of the gals in the group, one of our friends, who, who said, started asking me the basic questions. You know, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? That Jesus is the Son of God? And just broke it down like that. And so my response each time was yes, yes, yes. And at the end, she said, well, then what's you know, what's holding you back? And I thought, well, there isn't anything. And I, it was it was as simple as that. It had happened over time, watching community with uh, Christians and seeing to seeing their lives be be real and joyful and and yeah. Thank you so, so much for calling. Wow. Wow. Boy, you guys have been doing it for many, many years. And I... We're old broads. (laughs) Listen. Listen. 
I don't know what you want to call it. They're old broads who don't know Christ. Yes, right. But you're old broads who have been. Uh, mm. That's why. That's why I love her. <laughs> because I'm just old broad. Yeah. Right, and you just say it. You just say it. I can say it. Well, we call it. Um, you know, I was being polite. I didn't say geezer. You know, we are geezers. <laughs> But anyway, okay, I'm going to hang up because you guys need to end the show and, and get more serious. <laughs> get more serious. We're not serious. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. Have a wonderful day and congratulations on your anniversary. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So the number to call is WhatsApp 825-343-4486. We want to hear about your coming to Christ moment. What brought you to Jesus and how has that walk been for you? Boy, Doc, I can't tell you how much your story, Charlotte's story, has blessed me. Man, she's talking about old Giza. That has nothing to do with it. It has <laughs> the fact that you guys have remained faithful to Christ for over these years. Yeah, she mentioned yeah. something that I identify with youth for Christ mm-hmm. youth for Christ youth for Christ was so important even in my Christian journey even though I wasn't faithful because when I lost my youth for Christ community that like you know you don't really have that mm-hmm. and I'm that kind of person who needs that right Right. Especially at that time of my life, I needed that level of excitement. And, you know, I could tell you that if um, if I didn't have that church that she mentioned, and if Charlotte didn't have that church to go to, um, with all that joy, I don't think I would have lasted very long. Um, what was in it for me was the joy. And we started, in fact... In in the college that Charles and I, and I went to, that first weekend we were there as as juniors. We both transferred over there as juniors. We went to Assembly of call. God. There's a call. One moment, please. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the Higher Drive. You're on the Heart of the Matter with Dr. Madri. Good afternoon. Can you ladies hear me? Yes, we're hearing you loud yeah. and clear. You're live on the radio with mm-hmm. Dr. Madri on the higher drive. Amazing. Good evening, Dr. Madri. How are you, man? I'm blessed, blessed, blessed. So glad you called. How can we help you? Amazing. So, Right. So I, Denise asked me to share my testimony of how I came to know Jesus Christ, correct? Yes, I saw you. I saw you saying that you were you're chiming in. So I, we want you to chime in right here with us. Correct. Okay. All right. I was about to have my dinner, but let me go ahead. Um, 1993, the year I had my first daughter, I worked at the National Water Commission. I was about 25, 24, thereabouts. I met the Lord Jesus Christ at work. A co-worker, she spoke about community. Co-worker challenged me, you know, in terms of my salvation. Do you know Jesus Christ? No. You're trying to look for a girlfriend? No. I'm, I'm trying to please the Lord. You have been changing people and places. Why don't you try Jesus Christ? And I was like, what, really? <laughs> but that day onwards, I made the, did a sinner's prayer right then and there at Morrisco Road, Kingston, the National Water Commission headquarters. And it has been an interesting journey since then. Um, in terms of community, my, my, my group, we pray together, lunchtime. And in terms of a church family, Covenant Community Church, Kingston, has been my church family. And still today, we still connect somehow. But that is where I met the Lord Jesus Christ. You said it has been an interesting journey. Tell us about the interesting part of your journey. <laughs> okay. Well, I believe the Lord allowed that that baby girl I had to be my spoke in the wheel, my pause, my pivot, my pause. And because she um because she came into my life, I literally had to take a stock. And so it has not been a textbook life, but it has been an interesting life, a living epistle that's been read of men. Amen. In terms of how God has orchestrated my life, the people he has placed in my life, the, th- the things he has done. Mm-hmm. It, it is, I, I, I can't thank him enough 
when I heard Dr. Manjo talk about the, the community and the friends and going out and enjoying life, but also just being cognizant of the fact that when he says in Philippians 4, focus on these things and the peace of God, you know, it's, it, that, that's, that's been a journey all in all. This has not been an easy walk, been a journey and a half, but I wouldn't exchange it for the world. That's great. What a beautiful story. 31 years. Congratulations. Yes, it is. And she's 31 this year. Thank you, Dr. Marjorie. Thank you, ladies. Beautiful. Thank you for calling. Thank you so much yes, for sir. calling. Thank Have you. a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you for having me, Denise. Thank God you. bless you. God bless you. Yes, Doc. Uh, just, just thinking about those early days. We it was so much fun. I, trying out new churches and you know going to churches that were absolutely dead and terrible and thinking what the heck's going on here, uh, and then then coming back to our home church and forming that that girl band that we had and uh, doing worship services, uh, forming a sacred dance group. Uh, just those those fun things. You know, I didn't miss anything. There was, I didn't miss anything. You know, some people said, didn't you miss all the drinking? And I thought, whoa, no, I did not miss that. I didn't miss the hangovers. I didn't miss, miss uh, how, how horribly messed up it could have made me emotionally or spiritually. No, it was good, good times. That's not to say there weren't bad times, because there were difficult times. I have to emphasize that, to emphasize that too. There were very, very difficult times. But again, I had community to pick me up and pull me through and get me to the other side. Did you end cheerleading as a result of being a Christian? Did no. you have to give up any major thing in your life as a result of becoming a Christian? No. And that I want somebody to hear, loud and clear, because a lot of times we think that the putting off is the physical, like what, like the things that we're doing. You know, for me, God called me out of my job. It is not necessary for you to leave your job to serve God. Mm -hmm. My story is different. My story Unless God calls you to this life, there's a call coming in. Just one moment. Hello, good afternoon. You're live on the, let me make sure I have the call. Hello, good afternoon. You're live on the Heart of the Matter with Dr. Madri. Hello, pleasant. Good afternoon, Auntie Denise. <laughs> good afternoon to you. You don't have to identify yourself unless you want to. This is what this program All is right. about. If you want to, please all go right, ahead and tell right. the listeners who you are. You. Hello? Can she hear? Can Dr. Marjorie hear me? Yes, I can. I'm here. Hi, right, good evening. Good afternoon. I just like the I like um the fact that you know you can tell a young person that 50 something years, Auntie Denise. It's not me. Said it's yes Dr. to the Marjorie. Lord. It is not me, it's Dr. Marty. Do you want to tell the listeners who you are? Because I'm sure everybody knows this voice. Pastor Clive, Pastor Clive, Pastor Clive, Pastor Clive. Pastor <laughs> Thank Clive. you so much. You well, can't disguise, disguise that voice. In the heart of the matter, by the way. <laughs> so I was listening and, you know, it's just really, truly blessing. And I want to say, you just take me back 30 years ago. My son is turning 31 in 19... 94, um, 30 years I've just celebrated um, a month ago, my anniversary, if you will. Huh? <laughs> and, um, wow. It's, it's been a tremendous blessing um, to, to know that, you know, we, you know, your persons can, and that doesn't mean that we're not going to pass through some things. We're going to go through things. We want to let the listener know when you accept Jesus Christ in your life, it's, 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 he never promised um, that you're not going to go through anything. You're going to go through some stuff, but he's always going to be there for you. You need to know that through the thick and the thin, I've been through hell and back. 
but I had Jesus on my side. The night when I went to get saved, um, um, Dr. Margie, I did not went for church to get saved. I went to shut my brother up to tell him that, you know, stop asking me to come to church. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and when I got there, the, 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 the prayer warriors were praying for me. Oh my God. And asking me to, you know, to if I want to accept Jesus Christ. And 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 at the time I'm like, I'm not really ready. I'm a matter of fact, I was I was actually high, you know, I was very high. Um, I was smoking uh, marijuana the night when I went there. But I leave out of that service being filled with the Holy, the Holy Ghost. And I'm telling you, 30 years later, I'm still here. And what makes the difference is the Holy Spirit that comes into your life, that do the transformation when you say yes to the Lord. So even if, you know, you, you come to church and, you know, you, you say the prayer, but there is a walk that you have to walk, you know, and I thank God for those walks. And I'm really encouraged this afternoon to, to, to can say, you know what, we're still holding on um, and just to encourage those that have come to this place and want to walk with the Lord that 50 years and you still over 50 years and you still feel as if it's not, it's just yesterday and it has been sweeter as the day goes by. Messed Amen. up, but we're still here. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. That's exactly right. That's so good. Thank you so, so very much for calling, Pastor Clive. For those of you who don't know, those of you who are on po possibly my Facebook page, who have never heard this voice before, you've never been on ATG Radio before, Pastor Clive is the man behind HGG Radio. He's the founder of HGG Radio and the pastor of Higher Ground Tabernacle Ministries, hence our name, HGG, which is Higher Ground Radio Station. Thank you so much, Pastor Clive, for calling. Thank you for chiming in this discussion. We're just about out of time. Have a blessed day, All Pastor right. Clive. Yes, Doc. Any final That's words? I'm, I'm going funny. 38 years. If I, if I should add everything when I gave my life to the Lord, it's 38 years for me. But okay. it has been, it has been uh, 38 years of growth. That's how I'm going to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and this was, works. this was unexpected. I didn't know we were going to go here and I didn't know I was going to tell my story. And that, that's the way I like it. I, you know, I, I like just coming on with uh, just a few ideas and seeing where the Lord takes it. And it's always a beautiful thing. Thank you so much, Denise, for asking me about my story and letting me tell it and remembering those early days. And, uh, you know, I really would not go back for a million bucks. I wouldn't go back to those days. Um, it's, it's right here that I love that is so sweet because, um, man, you know, he, he's had a lot of work to do on me in 53 years. He's still not finished with me <laughs> every day. I'm learning something new every day. Like pastor Clive said, it's just, it's sweeter and sweeter. Doc, I was laying in bed this morning when I heard the Holy Spirit says, you need to talk about those 53 years. But I dismissed it because, as I said, you and I talked about a topic last week, even though I don't remember anything about what it was. And I tried to search through all of my messages to see what did Dr. Marjorie say we're going to talk about. I couldn't. But I believe the Lord sent the first caller who needed salvation as a trigger for what we needed to get, what he needed us to talk about. And I so thank you so much for blessing us with your story. And Doc, you need to talk about this more. So I'm going to bring you back outside of um, the heart of the matter. Maybe you need to come and share a word one day, take over the devotional and do Happy a word. Do or maybe, maybe we can just make you do the devotional on a Wednesday and move into the heart of the matter. Maybe that's a change we need to make. You take over the devotional on a Wednesday and just move straight into the heart of the matter. i do whatever you want to do. Whatever God wants to do, let him have his way. Amen and amen. All right. Gonna invite those who are joining us on, it, on YouTube and Facebook to jump on over to 
hggradio.ca. That's hggradio.ca to continue listening. As you know, I can't play music on on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, a big part of the show is music. Want to say good afternoon to Barbara Campbell. Thank you so much for tuning in. Want to thank you say thank you to all the callers. Those who are tuned in on YouTube, on Facebook, whichever part you're joining from, want to say good afternoon to you. And thank you so much for joining us for the heart of the matter. Doc, want to thank you for coming in and for pouring out, for sharing wisdom with us, the wisdom of Christ with us today. Have a blessed day. God blessings to you and your family. You. I trust that Markel had a Beautiful birthday yesterday. I can't let you leave without sending a happy belated birthday to your daughter. You know, that's that. You know what? 15 years I'd been a Christian and then I had my my daughter on that birth re, uh, that birthday. You know, when I uh, accepted the Lord on March 25th, then 15 years later, I had a baby girl. Pretty nice to have it on that day. What a blessing. <laughs> yeah. What a blessing. All right, Doc, have a blessed rest of your day. Happy belated birthday again to Markel. And uh, good day to your family. God bless you. The time is now two o'clock. Reaching you at the highest mountain.